now for a conversation presented by Minhouse. Please welcome the founder and CEO of Minhouse, Will Lucas, in conversation with Skiftex contributor Angela Tupper. Hello, thank you for joining us today, Will. Thanks very much for having me. We have only so much time, so I'm going to jump straight into the questions. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Mint House concept works? Yes, certainly. So Mint House, we are a tech enabled or next generation hotel company uh, with two major differences as you compare us to the Marriott's of the world. Uh, the first of which is that we operate out of luxury multifamily buildings. So luxury apartment buildings uh, in lieu of the traditional hotel, we operate in 13 cities and 24 buildings and, and growing rapidly. Uh, and so what we're doing is capitalizing on this rapid shift in consumer preference, where an increasing number of travelers every day are preferring to stay in Airbnb style or apartment style accommodations in lieu of the traditional hotel. And so you've got this market that was a zero dollar market essentially 10 years ago is well over a hundred billion dollar industry today and will be greater than 40 percent of the size of the hotel industry in 10 to 15 years from today uh, and there's just a glaring need for professionalized branded operators to do all the things that brands do in the traditional hotel space the second big thing that's totally different about us is that we power the whole experience via technology. So that means digital check-in digital checkout digital concierge customized fridge stocking so you can actually pick out what you want via SMS link or on the app and it's waiting in the fridge upon arrival. You can order branded Mint House room service that we power through ghost kitchens. You can order massages on demand through the app. You can exercise in rooms to live classes through a partnership with Fitness Mirror. And putting it all together, this differentiated and, and better room type uh, coupled with this, uh, the guest experience delivered through technology, we do believe we're in the process of, of changing the hotel industry forever. And you know, my, my evidence for, for such a claim is, is in the, the, the rankings of our hotels. And so actually just last week, uh, TripAdvisor announced that we were, the, were ranked the, the number one hotel in the entire country uh, based off of their guest reviews. This is their annual ranking that they do every year. Uh, actually the 18th uh, highest ranked hotel in the world, the only American hotel on the top 25 global list. Uh, and we also have top ranked hotels in Nashville and Greenville and Denver and Minneapolis and Miami. Um, so uh, very excited about what, what we uh, have in the future here at Mint House. Sounds like the model is really taking off. That's a really impressive win with the TripAdvisor ranking. I read that the type of asset class involved is called a flex multifamily asset. Can you define what a flex multifamily asset is? Yes. So the flex multifamily asset is essentially the new asset class that we're in the process of creating. A flex multifamily building is just a multifamily building with some percentage of the building being operated by a mint house style short term rental operator. Uh, so it's essentially a asset class that carries the upside of a hotel and the downside of a multifamily building. And so it's a, it produces a risk adjusted return profile that you really don't see very often uh, in real estate. Uh, another way to think about this is, is that this is the easiest way to make your building mixed use. So 80% of new developments today are mixed use. That wasn't the case 20 years ago. So developers have learned that making your building mixed use is beneficial for a couple of reasons. One, it diversifies your revenue stream. And two, you create a little bit of a network effect in that building. Uh, so this is a way to, to make your building mixed use without any sort of pre-development, pre-planning, pre-expense. We can pop in within 40, you know, with 45 days notice, we can be operating the moment we step out of the building, it immediately doubles as its original multifamily use without any further expense. And so uh, the, the elements of the flex include that, the flexible use, which I just mentioned, the flexible duration of the reservation. So we're able to drive short stay business, extended stay business and long stay business to account for seasonality and, and different market conditions like we just did over the pandemic when we were driving mostly longer term stay business in, into our buildings. And then the flexibility of the percent of the building that we operate, we're, we're happy with 100% of the building, 50% of the building, and as little as 10% of the building. Sounds like flex is really the operative word in flex multifamily asset. It's the flexibility that makes it so low risk as an investment. 
Is this idea really investable though? How would a multifamily property owner go about financing a flex multifamily asset? Yes, so we believe this is a multi-billion dollar asset class over the next several years. Uh, we're already working with some of the largest institutions in the country that see the that, that understand this asset class and understand us as an operator and actually are in the process of closing a few deals with them today. Uh, it's our view that this asset class will go much in the same way of student housing, which was 20 years ago, not an institutional grade asset class and is today. Uh, we expect the exact same thing to occur here with Flex Multifamily. From an investment perspective, what are the advantages of partnering with a professionally run SDR operation like Mint House? Yes, absolutely. So there's a, a, a couple of different things that a professional operator like us brings. So the first is our ability to drive outsized revenue through our distribution. And so we signed over 60 corporate partnerships, as an example, last year. Uh, partnerships with many of the largest Fortune, you know, Fortune 100 companies. Uh, also an excellence in operations. So I think I already pointed to the number one hotel ranking uh, that we had in New York and several of our, our other properties, but um, this can really enhance the, the, the profitability and profile of the building to, to own the, you know, a top ranked hotel in that particular market. Uh, and then on safety, security, reliability. And so we have instituted technology across our rooms. We have noise monitoring technology that actually measures the decibel, decibel level uh, so if a certain noise uh, level is breached during quiet hours, we're instantly uh, responding. But I think even more than that, we have heavily invested in turning our presence in the building from a potential downside to an amenity in the building. So we're actually offering the amenities that we offer our guests to the entire building, to the traditional 12 month tenants that might live above our operation. And so as an example, we already offer cleaning so residents can book a clean with just a few clicks from our cleaners at a way below market rate because we have them coming in on hourly and so now you're getting a, a pretty positive amenity uh, just by being in the building uh, where mint house operates so we're essentially taking a page out of the ritz carlton's book that sells condos at a 20 percent premium to market because people actually want to be in the building with all those extra amenities Right. So I guess all of those perks help to address any kind of pushbacks or concerns you might get from ownership before you enter into an agreement. Uh, that's exactly right. So that is the, the number one question that we get from uh, new building owners is what does this mean for the traditional tenants in my building? Will this degrade their experience? And uh, we have you know answered that question now in the 25 or so buildings that we're currently operating in um, and again have invested heavily in technology to get our guests in and to actually have some uh, controls over and, and insight into what our, our guests are doing and then of course the big piece is the amenities that we offer that actually can really enhance the value uh, of the entire building. The travel market has shifted dramatically over the past year. How did Mint House adapt or introduce new service offerings in response to changing needs from renters and landlords? Yes, so you know we were always fully contactless. So I think we were starting from you know at an advantage relative to the traditional hotels. Uh, you could always access our units without coming face to face with anyone. Uh, and really, you can enjoy the vast majority of our amenity suite, which again is, is offered totally digitally. Um, but the biggest fundamental change that we made was driving in a longer stay guest. And so our average nightly stay went over 20 days from an average of about four nights uh, prior to that, prior to the pandemic, uh, which I think highlights the flexibility inherent in our, our model. So we saw uh, the vast majority of our, our guests working remotely out of our units, which is, of course, what we've, we've all been doing over the past year. We have some really, I don't mean to cut you off, but we have some really thoughtful audience questions coming in. What is your lease model? Fixed terms, revenue share? Great question. So we sign management agreements, so revenue share agreements with our building owners. Uh, in the early days of Mint House, we did sign leases. Uh, now that the market is proven and we have you know, many, many examples of how much 
excess NOI that we can generate in the building. We have switched to entirely management agreements today. Our portfolio is about 70% management agreement, 30% leases, uh, and we haven't really signed a lease in the last two years. Um, and we believe this is the better arrangement between us and our building owners. Uh, it allows for them to really participate in the in the upside that we can we can create in many cases, in most cases actually two x or more the NOI that you can earn under traditional multifamily use, um, all while making an implicit promise and guarantee to our owners that in in a different economic environment we will, we will be around because we're only signing management agreements. Okay, we have time I think for one really quick answer to the next question. How is Mint sizing the multi-billion dollar asset class that's being described? Can you share more details? Yes, so there are 700,000 Class A multifamily units in just the top 40 metro areas in just the CBDs of, the, of those areas. So every single one of those units represents a potential Mint house uh, uh, operation. Uh, so the, the category is absolutely enormous. Ultimately, we're part of the broader hotel industry, which is a trillion dollar global industry. Um, and so, you know, we think this is a, you know, multiple, multiple billion dollar category just over the next two, three years. All right. Well, we're almost out of time, so we'll need to wrap up. Uh, if anyone from the audience wants to learn more, head over to our sponsor showcase area to connect with someone from Mint House. We've also dropped a contact email in the chat window. Will, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Angela.